Welcome back. Rune Quran. Rune uh, uh, Shura. Sur 42. And we're picking up on 52. And thus have we, by our command, sent inspiration to thee. Thou knewest not before what was revelation and what was faith. But we have made the Quran a light wherewith we guide such of our servants as we will. And verily thou dost guide men to the straight way, the way of Allah, to whom belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on earth. Behold how all affairs tend towards Allah. Okay, that's the end of that section. Uh, I know I'm just 39 seconds in, but uh, we're going to go back and review what I liked in this deeply philosophical section. And on 45, it's like in, in looking with a stealthy glance. I like the way that's worded too, because it's like, when it's stealthy, it's not like, like, like a fragmented, frantic, chaotic vision, right? Um, it's like stealthy, like, it's focused, but it's like stealthy as in like, you know, I don't know, like, kind of like a predator, but the good sense of a predator, a hunter, you know, even an eagle, it's stealthy right yet or you could good example is a lion right because they have literally have to kind of be quiet sometimes or jaguar jaguars are super stealthy interesting and then there was 48 right he bestows children male or female according to his will and plan so basically what that's telling me is that every child is you know brought into this cosmos by the will of Allah right and they have a plan and some will say i already know because i used to say this too well why would uh god send a child to be born who's just gonna die a miserable death right and if we say to the plan a death can make people change tragedy can change people and maybe through that death people learned a valuable lesson for example Sadly so, uh, whenever there's a crime against a child, mothers wake up and realize, oh, you know what, I think I've been uh, trusting people too much. Maybe I should not do that, right? Oh, did you hear what happened to so-and-so's kid? Oh, okay, you know what, I need to change, uh, you know, who my kid hangs out with, right? And uh, that's, a th like, for me, for example, I would never, I don't think I'm going to send my kid to any of those summer camps. You know how, like, kids go to summer camps? When I went to those camps, when I went to the Christian camps, it was not, I didn't like it, so I didn't, you know, not enough supervision. So now I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to send my kid there. Even though a lot of kids had a miserable experience, some had good experiences, you learn from the good and the bad, right? So if the children don't get to make it into the world, it's according to a bigger plan. Like, for example, think of those abortion doctors who changed their minds, right? God sent the, wom the woman to get pregnant, right? She he knew, let's just say he knew she was going to abort. She had a feeling she was going to abort. The, the little baby died, but that little baby's soul maybe is going to like weigh extra heavy on that abortion doctor's consciousness and maybe help them to flip their view and help, you know, adjust the social safety net or, you know, want to be part of a non-profit that helps women in need uh, who might be afraid to have kids, right? And, you know, soften their heart. So it's not just about selling off those baby parts to science, right? It's interesting. So even through suffering and privilege, do we see, like, everyone has a plan, right? The baby genius is going to have, you know, a plan. And then even the small child who's helping work in the rice swamps is you know hell has a plan too maybe that kid's gonna bring joy and take good care of somebody when they're older like everyone has their place in the cosmos you know and if we think like that if the children are bestowed according to the will and plan of the creator you begin to stop comparing children so much to each other you know what i mean and then on 51, that was one of my deep favorites. Uh, it's not fitting for a man that Allah should speak to him except by inspiration or from behind a veil or by sending a messenger to reveal uh, with Allah's permission what Allah wills. That one is super deep and highly philosophical. 
I would like to discuss that with some of my n other nerdy friends, see if they'll go in with that on me from their perspective of what it means. And on 36, whatever ye are given here is but a convenience of this life, but that which is with the law is better and more lasting. It is for those who believe and put their trust in their Lord. More encouragement, right? To not, you know, get sad because, you know, you don't have a Tesla or, or something like that. And then 39, uh, the, you kind of have the right to in, de defend yourself if you're being inflicted by oppression by a tyrant, right? A little mini dictator, whether it's in your work or your neighbors or whoever it is, have patience and tolerance. Don't be overly passive, but know that it cannot be above and beyond what that person deserves, right? So abject cruelty versus just justice. Do you know what I mean? There's a difference between that. And then on uh, 23, most ready and most ready to appreciate service. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then on 24, Allah blots out vanity. So it's like, it's it's amazing. I, 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 get, I have a, you know, a very deep history with vanity, but vanity and vainness are just hard to really beat out of you. It's, it's really hard sometimes. And then uh, on 27, for he is with his servants well acquainted, watchful. I like the language. I like the way that's phrased. And 17, the balance by which to weigh conduct. 20, to any that desires the tilleth of the hereafter, we give increase his tilth. And to any that desires the tilth of this world, we grant somewhat thereof, but he has no share or lot in the hereafter. And then 22, thou will see the wrongdoers in fear on account of what they have earned and the burden of that must necessarily fall on them. Again, their own bearing their own burdens, right? And then it continues. But those who believe and work righteous deeds will be in the luxuriant midst of gardens they shall have before their Lord all that they wish for. That will indeed be magnificent bounty of Allah. Ah, pretty God. And then, oh yeah, on 13. Uh, that ye should remain steadfast in religion and make no division therein. To those who worship other things than Allah, hard is the way to which thou callest them. Allah chooses to himself those whom he pleases. So, yeah, forcing people to convert is not going to work. He So it's basically like, Allah is going to choose who he wants. So just don't go around bashing heads and cracking skulls, as they say, as uh, to force anyone to believe what you want them to believe. It, they have to do it on their own accord. So stop prophetizing judgment that's what i say and guys to himself those who turn to him so it's basically like you're not it's it's different than like uh the conversion rates of like like the mormons uh sometimes you know like missionaries right they go out and like it's like you it's part of your uh good works to them that you have to go out and knock on people's doors jehovah's witnesses too and you have to like Go to many houses as you can, and that counts as like working your good deeds. That's gonna help you be among the elect or be among those who enter heaven in the kingdom of God. But the Quran did mention that the more you try to convince people, the more averted they become to it. I prefer, um, you know, the method of let people attract how they want to come. It's like you light the light, the moth will fly. That's how I look at it. And then on 15, nor follow thou their vain desires. Again, following that vanity. I, I, I Again, the Quran really touches on that. Really touches on vanity and vainness. Really does. It doesn't let you forget. And then on 6, thou art not the disposer of their affairs. And then seven, mother of cities, 
like the way that was worded. The day of assembly. And then, but he admits whom he will to his mercy. Again, he admits who he wants. So if you're pushing people, pushing, 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 you can be pushing them to a closed door. You know, like imagine pushing someone to a door and their head's just like, point, 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 and you're like, go on, go in, go in. And it's like, nope, there's a stone wall there. They haven't been given permission. You pushing them is not going to force the door to open, right? It's not your job. You can guide, you can talk, conversate, but you weren't appointed the judge. You weren't appointed to be the one to drag anybody by the collar to anywhere, you know? I like it. Very educational section. Very deeply philosophical. And if you think about it, it says consultation. It sounds like a consultation. It really does. Sitting there, you're like, oh, yeah, deeply philosophical. You can go back and forth. Consultation, dialogue, discussion, examination, reasoning. Right? Using your intellect. See, a consultation isn't just you going like this and listening to someone blab on. A consultation is like you ask questions, they answer. They tell you something, you think. You reflect. There's this moving back and forth of ideas and brain power. I really like it. What do you think, family? Covering a lot. 